Welcome back. My name's Christina and welcome to the Reclaimed Heirloom. We're going to transform this and in today's tutorial I want to show you how to use chalk paint with glaze and how you can make custom colors and blend so beautifully. So let's get started. Starting off removing your hardware, remember to clean your furniture pieces really well inside and out. So starting off with Annie Salone's Emil, French Linen, Paloma, and I'm even going to throw in Rod Mill. So these are all like a lilac. And I'm going to show you how to use clear glazed water base as well as the chalk paint and extender for your clear glaze. I'm going to use some flat palm chippy brushes as well as I'm also going to use a oval round brush and just a smaller detail brush. I'm going to start off just putting a base color down of the Emile. Beautiful lilac color. Always super important when working with chalk paint, you want to start with a moist paint brush and have a water bottle on hand. All I want to do is just put a base coat down. And this is the first time I've ever actually chalk painted wicker. So I'm finding that painting a wicker, I am having to use a little more water than I normally would on my other furniture projects, but that's okay. It seems to be going down quite smoothly. Um, you just want to give it uh, the extra water and a little extra brush stroke, and it seems to be going on just fine. So again, I'm just starting with the base coat of Emile, and I want to get it into all the little corners and edges. <laughs> So with a little bit of water, extra water, and a little extra brush stroke, painting wicker is just like painting any other furniture. I'm not really having any concerns or problems, but I probably am gonna go ahead and do two full coats to start for my base before we start doing our custom color glaze. Because we have these little pivots in the wicker pattern, I am finding that um, I am having to do those additional brush strokes. Uh, for most of my furniture projects, I generally like to do all the frames of any doors or, or drawer frames um, just to give it that continuity. I will probably go ahead and paint the inside old white and maybe even throw in a little bit of stencil. But I also wanted to show you how you can stencil fabric. So for a little extra bonus, I'm actually going to show you a plain fabric and chalk painted stencil and how easy it is to do. So let's take a look at that. So for this little bonus project, I'm going to use a plain stencil, a roller, I'm going to use some rod mill, Emily, and I think I'm even going to throw in some French linen, but we'll come back to this in a moment. This first coat's going on super easy, so I'm pretty impressed with the whole painting wicker. Not complicated at all. And it's going on pretty quickly, actually. So, so far I've been at this for about 45 minutes and I am almost done. Just one more side after this to go. And then I will proceed to a second coat. But all in all, again, I'm just using straight chalk paint and water just to get my base coat on there. And then after that, we're gonna do the second coat. And then I'm super excited to see how the blending's gonna work on wicker. First coat looks all complete, so we'll let that dry. So I'm going to go ahead and head over to my chair and let's continue on with that project. So what I've done here is I've laid some uh, shop towel down for something to roll my roller on. And I'm gonna start off with a little bit of rod mill here, but I have decided to change my stencil as my seat is actually a little bit bigger and I wanted to add a little bit of a bigger stencil. So important rule when you're doing this to a fabric is very, very light spurts of paint. So rolling it from the paint, um, you wanna roll it on the side there and get off excess. You're basically just treating this like a dye. And I wanna use a few different tones with this. And I wanna see if I can create some dimension with a couple of these colors. So 
my first coat was completely dry and now I'm adding my second coat. And I think it's time we're gonna move on to our custom color glaze mix. And here we go. So I'm gonna talk you through this. All I've done is taken takeout trays with lids and I've mixed up my custom color with glaze. The important rule with custom color glaze is four parts glaze, one part paint. One tray is Rod Mill and French Linen. Second tray is just Paloma. Third tray is French Linen and Enfleur. And fourth tray is Enfleur with a hint of Barcelona. And again, using separate brushes for each of your custom color mixes. So again, four parts clear glaze, one part paint. Starting off, I'm actually going to put clear glaze down first with a separate chip brush. And the reason I'm doing that is because I want to have as much forgiveness to this blending and make it even smoother, kind of like butter. So to start off, I'm going to use the Paloma for a highlight. Then I'm going to move into a little bit of the um, French linen and on fleur mix that I started with. And again, you can play with any color mix you want and any uh, blending formula and design that you wish and you can also use any chalk paint you want I'm just showing you the demo with this particular project so again you're gonna add your clear glaze then you're gonna add your custom color glaze and the blending is just so smooth this is going faster than even putting the original base coat on it's fantastic Again, this is just so unbelievably smooth. That's what the glaze is for. And remember, you don't need to use water anymore. You're using the glaze, which is holding everything in place and allowing a nice blending, smooth transition. It's fantastic. I love this. So I wanna take us back over to our chair and see what else we can do to highlight and low light this. So again, you're gonna to wanna to offload the excess paint that you've taken. And right now I'm adding a little bit of the uh, a meal. And what that is doing is kind of overlapping, but also going to complement the rod mill. If you've never done anything like this before, I would probably recommend uh, using some kind of tape to adhere your uh, stencil to your chair as you're doing it. As you can see, I'm doing it freehand. The biggest rule and important is very, very little amount of paint. So lots of offloading and play with your colors, play with your color tones as far as highlights and lowlights. It's a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to sharing the completed project with you um, towards the end and see how this turned out. showing you a little more up close and personal to how easy and smooth this blending is with the custom color glaze it is literally like butter I absolutely love it and it's going so quickly but most of all I'm just having some fun I don't really have a particular pattern that I'm trying to uh, equate to I am literally just having some fun and that's what you should be doing that's what chalk paint is all about just having some fun taking something old and dark and drabby and putting some color and life and being creative. There is absolutely no right and wrong with it. So again, clear glaze first, then you're gonna add your custom color glaze. And the reason is, is so that way you have that barrier and you have that wiggle room and you don't have to depend on the water. Using the clear glaze and custom color glaze literally makes the blending transition seamless with such little effort. I absolutely love this. I definitely recommend giving this a try. You will be absolutely floored how smooth, simple, and organic this looks just by making your custom color tones exactly how you want them, blending them through, not having to concern yourself about brush strokes, nothing. It is great, and this wicker is fantastic. I highly recommend if you have a wicker piece and you want to go ahead and put a different color on, you won't have any problem at all. If for any reason you want to correct something, not a problem at all. 
just add your clear glaze over what you've already blended. Go ahead and apply that down first, then add your custom color mix and voila, go ahead and re-blend what you did and make any corrections you want. It's super easy. If you've taken a break from your project and everything is dry, same step applies, not to worry at all. Just grab your clear glaze, it will reactivate everything that you've already done, add your custom color glaze and away you go, an easy correction again. So not to worry if you've taken a break and it's dried. So remember, the glaze is not a sealer. You're still going to have to go back with either a clear wax or a lacquer to seal your project once it's finished. Let's head over and see what the chair looks like now that she's completely done. I went ahead and staged it and I'm really happy with the results. So it's not scratchy, it's not starchy, it's perfectly smooth, no reason to seal. Once it's completely dry, just give it the 24 hours and you're good to go and you can sit. I am so super excited to share with you guys. Some of the subscribers have sent me some photos based on their projects of the techniques that they've been learning on this channel. So definitely stay to the end and check those out. They are just gorgeous. So I'm gonna go ahead and clear wax or you can use a lacquer and I'm gonna show you what the viewers and subscribers have been making, and these are just absolutely sensational pieces. Yeah, and again, for inspiration, take a peek. I'm just about to show those. If you like this tutorial, give me a thumbs up. Um, some really fun, lots of fun ideas coming. So I definitely, if you have any comments on this or questions, leave comments in the comment box below. And most of all, don't forget to subscribe, and we'll see you soon. Thank you.